All right. So next up, we're going to string up a Prince Triple Threat Scream Oversize. It's a 16 by 19 pattern. The mains start at the throat, therefore they end at the throat. Um, we're going to be stringing a hybrid. The top cross uh, ties off at five head. The bottom cross ties off at six throat. And your mains tie off at eight throat on each side. Uh, we're going to be doing a hybrid of Babala Natural Gut, 17 gauge gut in the mains at 58 pounds plus 10% pre-stretch and Copoly crosses, 18 gauge polyester crosses at 50 pounds. So that's the hybrid that we're going to do. And before I get started I want to show you a quick tip. I've done this before but it seems like every time I do it I always hold the racket off of camera. So I'm going to show you a little trick on removing your strings. I already cut out all the strings on this frame. Obviously, before I mounted it, you would always take the strings out before you mounted it, but I'm going to leave it mounted so that hopefully it stays within the frame of the camera. But most of the time when you remove the strings from the frame, you're just going to push, when it comes down to the, obviously the knots or the, the, the part that might give you trouble. And if you just push the strings out, the, the hoop, this way, and then pull on the string where the knot is here, it comes out very easily. But every once in a while, you have this situation where the cross string, in this case the black string, is tied to the main, and then the main string is tied to the cross. And so it seems like no matter which direction you try to pull, you can't really get it to come out. Because there's a loop of string on the outside of the frame over here that's connecting the two. So here's the easy way to deal with this. Like you always would normally, push any strings that are loose to the outside of the frame. You're trying to get where you just have only the two knots left here. So push all the, this main through, push this cross through. So now you can't really tug on either of these. They seem to be connected. So here's the very simple solution. Since there's a loop of string on the outside of the frame over here, but it's under tension, it's taut, grab the tail carefully of either one of these knots. doesn't really matter which one, whichever one you can get a good grip on. And with your pliers, you're going to pull that knot away from the frame. In other words, towards the center of the hoop. Because when you pull on this, what it does is it makes one string slide along the other. And once you pull this knot in an inch or so, now when you push this back through the frame, the, the piece of string that was taut before, in other words, when you pull this knot towards the inside of the hoop, you're creating slack, but now you have to push these strings back through the hoop, and now you can see the loop here. And once you have a, just enough of that, that loop doesn't have to be very big, just big enough for you to cut that with your cutters. And once you snip that little loop that was connecting the two, now you can pull the strings out just like you would any other time. Just pull the string here where the knot is, and it's easy to remove them. So there's a quick little tip on how to remove the knots that seem to be connected to one another. So I've already got the machine set up at 58 pounds plus 10% pre-stretch for the mains and I'm using the remainder of a set of 17 gauge gut, Babala Natural Gut. I used 19 feet from this set before. Um, in many of my videos I've mentioned if you're working with sets of string I highly recommend that you always measure exactly how long the set of string is. Do not assume it's 40 feet. Uh, all kinds of people run into trouble. They're stringing an 18 by 20 frame where it's really going to come down to needing every little bit of the string or they're trying to string. They'll cut a, a set of string in half and try to string a racket that's got 18 mains and then they're going to use the other half of that set of string to string the same racket later or another racket later that's got 18 mains. And 18 mains is going to use up a lot more string than say 16 mains or even if you're doing crosses because the, obviously the, the main strings are longer. So it really pays to measure all of a set of string before you start with it. It's really important to know if you're starting with 40 feet or 40 feet 6 inches or 40 feet 8 inches or 39 feet and 5 inches because it, it, can, it can make a difference in the end. So with the natural gut, um, the previous racket that I used the, the first half of this on had 16 mains and this racket has 16 mains so you really isn't going to come anywhere close to using up every bit of string but it's nice to know how much you need, for example, the previous racket. 
that I did before this one. I cut 19 feet from this set of, of natural gut. And I knew that 19 feet was going to be longer than I needed, but I checked to see how much I had extending past the gripper on each side. And it was um, 5 inches past the gripper for each side of the main. So 5 inches plus 5 inches is a total of 10 inches longer than I really needed. So, and so the next time I don't necessarily need to cut 19 feet from a set of gut since I really only needed, what, 18 feet, two inches. So if I cut 18 feet, two inches off that set of gut, that leaves the remainder of that set, which is what I have here, longer. So it might be wise to have that, save that set for the next racket that I see that does have 18 mains. Nonetheless, um, so we're gonna measure and see how long this remaining piece is. So I know that I used 19 feet the first go round, but let's see how much is here. And then when we get to the, uh, the end of the mains, whatever overage I have, I'll take note of that too. And I've already given this uh, got a light pre-stretch, a manual pre-stretch to take out most of the coil memory so it's a little bit easier to work with, just like I did on the previous racket. So let's see how long this is in actuality. And I think this racket, let's see, 27 inches is going to be right here. So I'm measuring not actual racket lengths because this is an extended length racket, but I'm measuring to right here which is exactly 27 inches. So. I'm going to call it a racket length, but it's really 27 inches, is what I mean. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's nine racket lengths plus what looks to be about an inch. It's a little over an inch, but we'll call that an inch. So nine racket lengths would be 20 feet, three inches, plus this extra inch. So I have 20 feet, four inches here, which may or may not be enough to do a racket that has 18 mains. But let's say I had cut... if. When I cut off the first half of this set, if I didn't cut off 19 feet, but rather I'd cut off 18 feet or 18 feet 2 inches, therefore there would be more left here and make it easier to string a racket with 18 mains. So it's just important to take note of how much you're actually starting with, in this case 20 feet 4 inches, and then when I do the final pulls on the mains, if I have 3 inches past the gripper or 9 inches or a foot and a half past the gripper, I'll comment on that and then I'll know exactly the minimum I would need to do this frame with this gut at this tension. So I've already cleaned my clamps, my starting clamp, my gripper with alcohol. Anytime you're stringing with natural gut, you should really make sure everything that's going to touch the string is really, really clean so that you don't have to worry about anything slipping. Uh, and damaging the string. You don't want to ruin a nice set of natural gut by having dirty clamps and allowing the string to slide through it. So let's get started on this. And when you're stringing gut, you should always be really, really careful don't step on the string, don't let it get caught on anything that would make it kink or bind. You really want to be cautious all the time, regardless of what type of string you're using. It's a good practice to always prevent the string from kinking, but it's especially important with natural gut because as soon as you get a kink in it, you'll create a weakness, uh, or a defect rather, where it'll be, it'll be weak there. So you especially want to be careful every time you have a loop over here that's coming into the frame. So there's our central loop. And 
and you want to adjust your clamps, which again should be very clean. If you have good quality clamps, you shouldn't need to squeeze, clamp the string super tight. You want, to string, you want to clamp it just tight enough, but so that you don't damage or crush the string, but you don't want it to slip or slide either. So here's where I want to control this loop of string right here to make sure that it's not getting kinked when I pull it through. So again, over here is where I'm controlling this loop. Make sure that there's no twists as it closes into the frame. Now this racket, 
The only skip at the head of this racket is at 8 head. The skips at the bottom are pretty normal at 7 and 9. But at the head there's only 8, but you also have shared holes at 6 head and 9 head. And the holes are, not only are they shared holes, they're the, the double barrel style where there's basically a partition. There's a separation between the upper hole and the lower hole. So when I'm stringing the mains, I always want to elect to go in the bottom hole because the string is actually getting pulled slightly down towards the gripper. If I were to th thread the string through the upper hole and then tension it, the tension would be pulling down on that very thin partition and it might pull the string and rip it through the partition down into the bottom part of the hole into the lower hole anyway. So I don't want to tempt fate. I always string the mains. I always think of stringing the mains low. Uh, in this case, it'll be in the bottom hole and then later the cross will go in the upper hole. And I don't have to worry about it because the main's already in the lower hole. But even on rackets that don't have um, shared holes and shared grommets, I always have this sort of mentality or approach to where the mains are going to be, if you look on the outside of the frame, the mains would be lower. So in this case, the, we have light colored string for the mains. So if you were to look on the outside of the frame, any runs of string on the outside that are light colored, which are gut, will be sitting lower than the black cross string. So crosses are always above uh, mains. So for example, this racket has gut in the mains, which is the white string, and the orange string in the crosses is polyester. So if you look on the outside of the frame, this is how it was mounted. Uh, as I was stringing the white string, anywhere on the outside of the frame, if you look there, you'll see that the white string is always below the orange because the white string was installed first the mains are always uh, or the white string is always underneath the orange all the way around so everything stays nice and parallel there's no crossovers um, when you're working with two different colored strings it's very easy to see that in practice but of course even when you're doing a hybrid uh, or, or you're stringing two piece with the same type of string or even stringing one piece if you kind of always think of when I'm stringing the mains they're going to be underneath the crosses the crosses will be above later like in a minute I'll be pre weaving my crosses up here at the top of the racket the first three crosses I'll put in before I finish up with the mains and that's to ensure that there's no crossovers on the outside of the the frame and that I don't have any blocked holes to deal with either so it accomplishes a couple things simultaneously but you'll see in a moment so I'm just letting you know that I'm installing this string through six head in the lower portion of that double barreled grommet And again, this loop over here is where I've got my eyes right now, and I see that there's a little bit of a twist in it. So I'll take this string and turn it to rectify that, that, that twist in there. So now here's six head, and I'm threading this main through. And I want to be absolutely sure that I'm in the bottom of that or I'll be in all kinds of trouble later when, I come, when it comes to the threading the crosses.
So now I have six mains installed on each side, or the center 12 mains if you want to think of it that way. But before I fill in the 7th and 8th main on each side, I'm going to go ahead and get my cross string, which I forgot to measure off. I'm going to use 18 feet 2 inches of this 18 gauge poly. So that's one racket length, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight racket lengths, which is 18 feet, plus another two inches. And I know that this is the length I need to string the racket and be able to tie the knots, but I'm not cutting off enough string to reach the, the tension head. I'm planning ahead to use a starting clamp to bridge to my tension head to conserve string. In other words, I don't have to cut. It saves me from cutting maybe another six inches off of the reel so that I don't have to go to the back of the tension head or around my Diablo to the back of the tension head or the gripper rather. So I'll still have enough left to comfortably tie my knots, but I'll be using my starting clamp to bridge to the tension head. Even though the string will actually be long enough to reach the back of the gripper, I don't want the string to pull up on the front edge of the gripper since there's an angle involved. When you go around the Diablo, it nullifies the angle. You don't have the angle issue. So you either have to use three inches more string to go around the Diablo, and then your string will enter the gripper without an angle, or to eliminate this three inches, you just go straight into the gripper, but then it wants to kind of ride up on the front edge. So just to get around all that and conserve string off of the reel, I usually plan to use a length, uh, and this is part of the plan. So now that we have 18 feet 2 inches for the crosses, I'm going to go ahead and pre-weave these. Now since this is the cross string, and the, my third cross is going to be here at 9 head, which is another one of those shared grommets, the double barrel grommets, I'm actually going to go in the upper hole of this particular grommet because I'm putting the cross in now. That leaves the bottom portion of that double barrel grommet open for the mains in just a minute. So these crosses are going in now but they're not getting tensioned until after the mains are complete. So over here at nine head, again, I want to go in the upper portion of that shared hole. So that's the third cross. Now the second cross goes in number eight, which, uh, like I said before, is the only skip that you encounter when you're doing the mains. And now the first cross, or the top cross, goes in here at six head, which is that shared hole that we just talked about. So now the upper portion of that double barrel grommet is open for that top cross to go in. And the same thing over on this side, the top portion of that shared grommet is open. So now that all the crosses are in, the top three I should say, now I don't have to worry about blocking any holes as I continue with the mains. And of course I have to go over or under the couple crosses that are there. So it's pretty easy to see what you need to do there.
and now this eighth main goes into the bottom portion of that double barrel grommet over here at nine head. So directly underneath where this black cross is. And of course I skipped seven here and I'm skipping nine here as I do the mains. And so this is what I'm talking about over here. This white string, the loop of white string is underneath any pieces of black string of the crosses here. So when this gets tensioned, it'll be underneath, uh, there'll be no crossovers, it'll be underneath the black string. And again, I'm going to make sure that this piece of string is underneath any black string on the outside of the frame over here. Now I'm going into the bottom hole of the double barrel grommet here at nine head. And of course skipping number nine throughout here. So seven got skipped and nine gets skipped and then we'll prepare to tie off. Oh, and I forgot to measure how much was, there's easily over a foot beyond the, the back of the gripper over here. Uh, I forgot to measure on this side, so I will on this side. So if I don't go around the Diablo, this side extends a little over 13 inches, 13 and a half inches, we'll just call it 13, 13 inches past the gripper, and I presume the other side probably did too. Um, Obviously, if I go around the Diablo like that, then it's going to extend just 10 inches uh, past the gripper because I know going around the Diablo uses up 3 inches. So yeah, that's 10 inches right there. So since I have enough length to go around the Diablo, obviously I'm doing that. Now these tie off here at eight throat. I get myself a really sharp point on the end of this string to help it go through that grommet because the string that you're trying the grommet here because it's at eight throat or the second to last main the penultimate main it means that that main is running through that grommet diagonally or making sort of an S turn so it provides it gives you a little bit more resistance than if you were tying off um, lower down where maybe the string is hugging the wall of the grommet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten I'm going to flatten the end of the string in a starting clamp. Try to get that really flat and super narrow and then recut another 
cut across the flattened portion so that you not only have a sharp point but a flat sharp point and that oftentimes will be all you need to make passage before you resort to grabbing a bunch of awls and sticking it in there and possibly damaging the string especially when it's gut a little patience like that does wonders and I'm going to tie off with a Parnell knot now normally I use my starting clamp to cinch up my knots except for when I'm stringing with gut then I only do it hand tight so that I don't risk possibly breaking it at the knot So again, Parnell knot over on this side too. So now we're ready to start on the crosses. So I'm going to turn the pre-stretch off and change the tension from 58 down to 50. Make sure I have enough string to reach the back of the gripper, even though I'm not actually going to load it in the gripper later. That's how much I'll need to tie a knot comfortably and not come up short. So now we're going to do the crosses at 50 pounds. And since this is 18 gauge poly, we'll need to adjust the clamps a little bit tighter than that 17 gauge gut to make sure that that's not sliding. Now before we tension the third cross, we'll go ahead and get the fourth in so that we're now stringing our crosses one ahead.
So here's where this uh, actually reaches the, the gripper, but I don't want to risk popping it out of the front edge, so I'm going to go ahead and bridge to the tension head to eliminate that potential risk and to conserve string from the reel. And I'll do the same on the top cross as well. And this is a Parnell knot as well. Whoop. Went around the top cross by accident. And I'll use the starting clamp to cinch this up, but I'll do it gingerly since we're tying the polyester. The, the anchor string is, the, is gut, and I don't want to damage the gut, so this will be a very gentle tug on this knot. So that's five head that your top cross ties off, and six throat, which is the grommet immediately below the bottom cross. Bottom cross exits seven throat, and it ties off at six throat, so it's nice and close. And again, this is a Parnell knot, and also this knot is also getting tied to a gut string. The anchor string is gut, so again, a little extra care here. Make sure we don't have any sharp tails, especially the polyester. I'm just using the back side, the rounded side of my bent nose pliers to make sure that those tails are flat and don't have a sharp edge that would cut someone's finger or the lining of a tennis bag. So we'll just do our final straightening and then we're all done. If you're stringing this racket one piece by chance and not doing a two piece job or a hybrid, uh, I use an around the world pattern because I don't ever install my crosses bottom up and with the mains ending at the throat, you're either going to string the, bottom, the crosses bottom up, which I never do, or you're going to use an around the world pattern. And the around the world pattern that I use on this frame is the Dire Desire around the world pattern. That particular pattern works really, really well on this racket, especially when you consider the transitions and so forth with the shared holes and the single skip up here. Um, I've got a video, I think, of me doing this particular frame uh, around the world with a one piece. So. The mains are super straight, except for just a couple nudges here and there. And let's see, the crosses.